You know, it's always a privilege to come before the Lord to worship Him and to honor Him. It's always a joy to do that. But sometimes we come into the house of the Lord and we don't feel like worshiping. We don't feel like praising. Because maybe we're going through a diff difficult season. The Bible says to us, offer a sacrifice of praise. And a sacrifice is something that will cost you. Sometimes you don't feel like doing it. But you do it because it's the right thing to do. And we know that wherever a good sacrifice is laid on the altar, God shows up. So today, no matter how you're feeling today, if you're discouraged, just offer a sacrifice of praise. When the lies of the enemy come, sing a bit louder today. When the voices come, sing a bit louder because the enemy wants us to miss out on what God has for us today. But we have to laugh in his face. We have to dance in his face and say, no, I refuse to listen to your voice this morning. Let us pray and offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to the Lord before we even pray. Father Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for your goodness towards us. We thank you for your everlasting love. We thank you, Lord, that you love us so much. That you think about us every single day. Even before we were conceived in our mother's womb, you thought us so loved. And we want to thank you, Lord, for your consistent love towards us. Your love never changes. Your love is always there. It never fails. Nothing can separate us from your love, oh God. What a love. What a love. You love us just the way we are. We thank you, Lord. And we say, Father, we thank you for giving us the breath this morning so we can come into your house and fellowship with our brothers and sisters. We thank you, God, for the blessings that you've poured upon us throughout the week. We thank you, God, for all that we've been able to achieve throughout the week. I mean, thank you, God, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So, Father, we want to honor your name this morning. We want to exalt your name. We want to say that you are good and your mercies endure forever. So this morning, Lord, accept our worship. Lord, creating us a clean heart this morning. And renew your right spirit within us this morning. Sometimes we leave home in a hurry, even argument. Father, Lord, just settle our hearts this morning as we come to worship you. We give everything to you. Everything to you. So take us, Lord. May our hearts be open this morning. We thank you for the worship team of God. We thank you for the angels that you have released in this place this morning. We thank you for the voices, for the hands and the feet of God. We pray, Lord, that you just empower them this morning as they lead us into worship. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. And we just want to honor Pastor Ian as he comes up. So guys, can you just stretch your hands towards Pastor Ian and Sister Pastor Denise? Um, so we can just pray for them. He wants you next to him. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this man and woman of God. We thank you, Lord, for their lives. We thank you for everything that you've put in them, Lord. We thank you for all that they've given to us as the body of Christ, oh God. And Father, Lord, we know that you've given Pastor Ian a word for us this morning. Father, we pray that our hearts will be open for this word. Lord, I pray that you will speak through him, Father, Lord, with boldness and confidence of God. Lord, I pray that this word will fall on good grounds, good soil this morning, O oh God. And the cares of the world will have to disappear because this word is so good. This, this word is so good this morning that it will bear fruit in our lives this morning. So, Father, we give you Pastor Denise and Pastor De um, and Pastor Ian this morning, Lord. Just bless them, Father Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's honor him. Thank you so much. Denise is just going to say something. Say something. Something. <laughs> Some of us, good to see you all. It's good to be here. It's good to be up early. Some of us were struggling as we got into a pattern of having a lion on Sunday. Thank you, Lord. Uh, but today we had to wake up a bit early, a tad bit early. So um, it's good to see you all and it's good to see everyone here. Um, Lord, we just want to say thank you for this opportunity, Lord, for bringing us here together today. 
Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. Lord, we know that this meeting is ordained in heaven today. You knew this was going to happen even before it's happened. And so, Father, although some of us still don't understand a lot of things as to why this is happening today in this place, we know that you ordained it. And, Father, we know that this meeting is being registered in heaven today. And for that, we give you all the glory, Lord, and we give you all the praise that you would send the spirit of wisdom and revelation right now in the name of Jesus upon your word, Father God, that you will speak prophetically to us, Lord. We're hungry to hear the prophetic today from your throne room, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus that every single person here today will receive fresh manna, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. It's a great pleasure to be here, it really is, and it's a great pleasure to be worshipping together with Destiny House. Some of you may not know, but Pastor Simon, he's one of my best friends. You didn't know that, did you? Yeah. He's one of my best friends. Uh, we meet every so often. I, I even confide in him. He confides in me. I know all about Janita. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> we confide in each other. And uh, yeah, we're, we're, I mean, Denise and I, we're just so proud of, um, you know, what's happened, what's in uh, Simon and Janita and Naomi. She was a little girl in, in New Life. She, uh, I used to say, hello, Naomi. She said, say, hello. <laughs> and now, now look at her. Wow, it's wonderful the, what, what God has done. Give them a big clap, amen. Thank you. Yeah, it's a joy to be here and be sharing your, uh, the word with you. Uh, I was actually here last night. We had such a fantastic meeting. I was ministering to the Brazilian church. And uh, yeah, well, lots of good things happened. And uh, so I'm back here in the morning the second time. Uh, I got home about 10.30 because, you know, they, their meetings go on for a while. But it was really, really good. Okay, um, you know, I was praying about what to share um, with uh, you today. And uh, I want to speak on, it's one of my favorite subjects. I have many favorite subjects, believe it or not. Not just prayer. There's faith, spiritual warfare, uh, you know. Uh, provision. I have many favorite subjects, but uh, one of my favorite subjects is the whole subject of faith. I've studied faith for several decades. I've written a book on faith, and I'm still learning about faith, uh, how it works. And um, just a few weeks ago, I spoke on, you know, um, understanding how faith works. And uh, to tell you the truth, I have just discovered some things about faith just in the last couple of months that were sort of missing pieces to the jigsaw. Because many Christians don't understand the workings of faith. They know a little bit about faith and we all know how to have faith in different situations. But there are many situations where we don't experience things from God because we, there's missing pieces in the jigsaw as it were. So I, I want to speak on the, the speaking aspect of faith. You know, there's an aspect of faith that involves you speaking what you believe on a regular basis. And I want to speak on that. Uh, I may use some stories you've heard before. If you've been somewhere for 42 years, you know, it's difficult to get new stories. But uh, you may hear some of the same stories because they illustrate the point. I use the story to illustrate the point. So I'm going to be reading uh, a few verses from the book of Genesis. And then I want to speak on the, the speaking aspect of faith. If your faith is going to be strong, you need to know uh, how to speak correctly about what you're praying about. And if you don't, you will nullify your faith. You will uh, uh, undermine it. And sometimes you won't get the desired results. So when you're believing God for something, when you're having faith for something, see having faith is like being pregnant. You know the baby's there, but it hasn't arrived yet. And that's what having faith is like. And so uh, I, I want to share with you one aspect of how faith works. All right, you know the story of creation. It says, uh, 
You know, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. Many people have different ideas about that. For me, I believe God created the heavens and the earth, and then He gave shape and form to it. And He spoke into it, and created the sea and the light and so on. And, and as you know, God created the world by speaking words. There's some things he didn't uh, speak words. He, he fashioned man from the dust of the earth. So he didn't speak man into being. But a lot of his creation was spoken into being. And Jesus makes reference to that. And there's actually something we can learn about faith by the way God created the world. It says in verse 3, Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Now, when God created light, it never existed before that in the place that he was creating it. And when God created things, he created things that never existed. You see, when man creates uh, like a car or a plane or a, you know, a kettle or a hoover or a, you know, when man creates something, he uses what already exists to create it. But God created things out of things that did not exist. He just spoke them into being. And so he had a picture in his mind, uh, you know, we can deduce this, that he imagined or saw what he was going to create, and he spoke it into being, and it came to pass. You see? And it says here, um, verse 11, God said, let the earth bring forth grass. There was no grass in the universe before. It didn't happen over millions of years. The herbs that yield seeds. And the fruit trees that yield fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass. See, God created the trees, and he put seeds in them so that they would continue to grow. You know, they say, in every seed is a million trees. You know, um, I remember driving through a forest in one of the countries where I was preaching. And there was a sign up there. Uh, they said... Um, a tree can make a million matches, but one match can destroy a million trees. But you know, when God created the trees, He created them uh, with seeds in them so that they would continue to go uh, and grow. And in verse 20, God said, Let waters abound with all the abundance of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. So God created great sea creatures, you know, the whale and the shark and the, you know, the salmon and the, the barracuda and all the, the great sea creatures, the fish and chips, uh, uh, <laughs> cod and place. There's a place to eat. Now, God created the great sea creatures, every living thing that moves, uh, when the waters abounded according to their kind. He spoke birds into being, male and female birds. And they had eggs. When I was in boarding school, I used to collect eggs. It was a, like a part of the hobby of some of the boys. And we, you know, I remember getting an egg. I had to pay another boy to buy this egg off of him. We used to put a hole in one side, put a hole in the other side, and blow the stuff out and keep the shells. And I had, a, uh, uh, I don't know if anybody here has heard of a minivet. It was a very, very rare bird. So I had a collection of eggs. God created those eggs. And if you look at the shape and the form and the colors, evolution, my big toe. <laughs> I, believe, I believe the whole theory and theories of evolution where the world created itself is the biggest deception uh, that man has ever swallowed. And some people believe it. I was talking to my uh, brother-in-law in Canada and we were driving, you know, through Canada. Canada is just a beautiful country. It's amazing. It's huge. We were driving past lakes and trees and all kinds of things. And I was telling him about my faith. And I spoke about creation. And he said, oh, come on. That's a Canadian accent, by the way. <laughs> he said, oh, come on. He said, evolution has been proved beyond any doubt. I said, no, it hasn't. Anyway, that was an interesting conversation. But you see, 
Uh, there's, a, there's a scripture that highlights this. It's in Hebrews chapter 1. Let me read that to you. Hebrews chapter 1. I just want to read the first two verses. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it elders obtained a great testimony. Now listen to this. By faith we understand. And I usually stop there. And what's coming after it, uh, we can only understand by faith. It says, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Over here it says that God created everything out of nothing. All he had was a picture in his mind. All he had was his imagination. He saw grass. He saw trees. He saw animals. He saw fish. He saw birds. He saw them in his imagination. And uh, I think it's fair to deduce that. And then he spoke. And uh, what he saw in his imagination came into being. He created the, the world by speaking things into being. And we have been made in the image and likeness of God. So... There's something we can learn from that, what God did. Let me read uh, Mark chapter 11. If you'd like to go to Mark chapter 11 in your Bibles, I'm just reading a story that we know very well. You know, Jesus was walking with his disciples. And you know, he went to the fig tree. You remember that story? You know, nothing here that looks like a fig tree. Let's assume, let's assume that this is the fig tree. He walks to the fig tree and he's expecting to find fruit on it. So he looks and there's no fruit. So he says, may no one eat fruit from you ever again. He opens his mouth and speaks to the fig tree. And you know, it says here in verse 14, I've said some of this before, but I'm going somewhere with this. In response, Jesus said, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And it says the disciples heard it. And I think he wanted them to hear it. He said it loud enough for them to hear it. So they're coming back now the next day. You know, verse 20. Now in the morning as they passed, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. If Jesus said, be fruitful and multiply, bring forth fruit in the future, that was a blessing. But he cursed the fig tree. By saying, may no one eat fruit from you ever again. No one did eat fruit from that tree ever again. And so, in verse 20, he says, In the morning, as they passed, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered. You know, he actually uses that to make a point. He says, have faith in God. Well, what's faith got to do? With speaking to a fig tree. Remember, Jesus, God spoke the world into being. And words spoken in faith can produce something in different settings. So he says, in other words, you saw me speaking to the tree and you saw what happened. I'm now going to teach you about faith. He said, have faith in God. Everybody say, have faith in God. Have faith in God. This is not the power of positive thinking. This is the power of biblical thinking. This is not mind over matter. This is word over matter. Amen. And so we are not, you know, out there uh, with uh, new age thinking. We, our faith is in God, not in ourselves. Our faith is in God. And Jesus says to them, he said, assuredly, I say to you, whoever, tell the person next to you, whoever is you. Whoever. Yeah. So you saw me speak. You saw me open my mouth. You saw me speak to the fig tree. But I'm telling you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes that what he says will come to pass, he shall have whatever he says. So Jesus said, I'm going to teach you about faith. And in the workings of faith, there is the speaking aspect of faith, which is very, very important. You see? So Jesus says, you saw what I did. In other words, if you paraphrase it, he said, you can do this too. Because I'm telling you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea. The mountain speaks of something in your way that shouldn't be there. You speak to it. God doesn't speak to it. 
You remember the illustration of this preacher? I've told this story many times. If you've got a good memory, you'll remember it from Bible school. Of this preacher, he was in a meeting. There was only about 40 people. And Jesus had appeared to him several times. It was raining and the farmers in the countryside hadn't come to the meeting. It was only about 40 people and it was raining, sort of cats and dogs. And uh, he sat down with 40 people in the meeting. And suddenly he said, Jesus has appeared to him right in front of him. He stood there in a little country town in the U.S. And he was looking at Jesus and Jesus opened his mouth and began to speak certain things to him. He was telling him certain things about his life and ministry and future. And then suddenly this little demon comes and starts, you know, moving around in the middle of Jesus and him. And the demon's making a noise. And he can't hear what Jesus is saying. And so he's looking at Jesus and looking at the demon, looking at Jesus, looking at the demons. In other words, Lord, can you do something about... <laughs> Can you, can you do something about this demon? So after a while, he said to the Lord, Lord, command the demon to go. And Jesus looked at him and said, You do it. There's some things won't happen until you open your mouth. I don't mean in the wrong way. <laughs> open your mouth in faith. Because Jesus said, I've given you authority to tread upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing will by any means hurt you. And when you speak the Word of God in a biblical way, inspired by the Holy Spirit, it is very, very powerful. Amen. You know, I used the illustration a few weeks ago at New Life on understanding how faith works. And I really enjoyed the sermon. You know, I know as a preacher you're not supposed to enjoy your sermon. <laughs> but <laughs> I enjoyed the sermon so much that I, I preached it again last night over here at the, at the, and they liked it. But the reason why I enjoyed this sermon so much, it was a missing piece in the jigsaw that fell into place related to faith. And like I told you, I've studied faith for several decades. And there are four aspects to having faith properly that are biblical. And I shared it, you know, the other day. Now, number one, faith comes by hearing, yes? Say with me, faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Now, you can hear the word of God concerning your life, but still nothing may happen. All right, you've got faith now. What are you going to do with it? Faith comes by hearing. But once you've heard the word of God, then you've got to believe it. So you hear it. You can't believe it until you've heard it. Faith comes by hearing. So you hear the word of God, and then you believe it. Now, when you hear the word of God, and you believe it, still, nothing may happen. And the illustration I like is of the woman who came behind Jesus. I use that. She came behind Jesus, and, uh, you know, I could paraphrase it. Uh, to save time, I won't read you the scripture, because you're all familiar with the story. It says that this woman heard about Jesus. So she heard that Jesus heals. She heard. Because many times when Jesus came down from the mountain, as he was walking along, people touched his garment and were healed. It didn't just happen once. It happened several times. And so everybody in Israel knew about Jesus. They knew that he was preaching. They knew that the miracles were taking place. And it said that she had heard about Jesus. So she'd heard aspects of the word of God. She'd heard. And she had faith. What she'd heard produced faith in her. But she had an incurable disease. And even after she heard about Jesus, she was not healed. But the Bible says she believed. In fact, it says in Mark's gospel, Jesus speaks to her. And he says to her, he says, daughter, your faith has made you well. And there are many times when Jesus says that. You know, when Jesus uh, talks to people, he doesn't say, my power has made you well. My faith has made you well. My ministry has made you well. My anointing has made you well. He very rarely ever said anything like that. He usually said, where is your faith? Oh, woman, great is your faith. I've not seen such great faith in Israel. Woman, your faith has made you well. When this woman was healed, Jesus 
made reference to the fact that her faith had brought healing to her. The fact that he said that, we know that she heard the word and she believed the word. But she still wasn't healed. But then the Bible gives us insight because she says in this passage, you know, she says in verse 28 of Mark 5, she said, remember the hearing aspect of faith. She heard, she believed, but then she said, if I may only touch his clothes, I may be made well. The lady said that. And you get insight there into the workings of faith. She heard, she believed, she still wasn't healed. And even after she said, you know, if I'll touch his garment, I will be healed. It was like definite, not a maybe. I wonder if I touch his garment whether I will be healed. No, she said that was faith in operation. Speaking what she believed was her faith in operation. And when you speak what you believe, it's like watering a plant. You know, we've had house plants. Some of them have lived and some of them have died. And usually they've died because they haven't been watered. And when your faith needs to be watered, and one of the ways you need to water your faith is by speaking what you believe. I'm not talking about speaking it to everyone. You speak it to yourself and you speak it to God. And you speak it to the devil. Boom! In his face. In your face, devil. Listen. This is the word of God that I'm speaking to you. And so she says, if I touch the hem of his garment, you know, I will be healed. So there's the hearing aspect, but still nothing's happened. There's the believing aspect, but still, all right, you hear and you believe, so what? There's the speaking aspect, uh, aspect and as you speak, your faith grows stronger. It grows stronger. You're watering the plant. You're watering your faith, and it grows stronger and stronger. And so there comes a point, God decides that point when, boom, suddenly something happens. I've experienced that. You know, uh, you know the story when I was around 30 years old. That's just a couple of years ago, you know. And um, <laughs> when I was 30 years old, I got all the symptoms of uh, asthma. And I started wheezing, you know. And I never had asthma, you know. I had it as a boy and it disappeared. So I went to the doctor, you know, the doctor gave me the, the squeezer, you know. So I got the squeezer and uh, I was not happy because I, I knew that Jesus had come to give me life and give it in all its fullness. And here I was, I couldn't breathe properly, I couldn't sleep properly at night. I remember running for a bus and <laughs> it took me 30 minutes to get my breath back because of the asthma symptoms. So I went for help to the doctor. And that was just about the time when I was studying fate and reading about fate and reading about Smith Wigglesworth, etc., etc., etc. And I was learning some of the principles of fate. So I said to myself, I got a healing scripture. And I began to speak that healing scripture to my body. I began to speak something like, surely he's borne our sicknesses by his stripes I'm healed. And I began to speak it to my body. Tell the person next to you, you can do this. Yeah. That's the reason why I'm telling it to you. And so I started speaking this uh, word. And for three days and three nights, you know, I, I didn't even plan it. It just happened for three days and three nights, the early stages of my development and faith. And I spoke the healing scripture to myself three days and three nights, morning, noon, and night. I wake up middle of the night, I'd be speaking the healing scripture. Surely he's borne my sicknesses by his stripes, I'm healed. I can't remember even what scripture I used, but I used the healing scripture. And I did it day and night, day and night, day and night. After three days, my asthma completely disappeared and it's never come back again. And it never will. But you see, that's the speaking aspect of faith. I knew Jesus was my healer. I believed Jesus was my healer. And then I began to speak it. I actually didn't know what I was doing. I didn't fully understand all the implications of what I was doing. And then the healing manifested. And I've seen that happen on different occasions. And you can see it happen too. But sometimes you've got to stay in there because the devil will fight you on it. He'll tell you it's not going to happen. 
You know, I used to work with a guy. He'd always tell me what the devil said to him. He said, the devil said, the devil said for heaven's sake, why do you listen to him? <laughs> tell, him tell him to shut up. And, and he never told me what God said to him. He said, the devil told me this, and the devil told me that. Well, he said, stop listening to the devil. You know? And so the speaking aspect of prayer is very important. Now, you know, where it says, have faith in God, Jesus said, you saw me speaking to the fig tree. I'm paraphrasing it. But I'm telling you, have faith in God. In other words, you can do this too. If you saw what I did, you can do it too. And I'm saying to you, if you speak to mountains, they will move. And some people say, have faith in God says, what it actually means is have faith like God. But you know, I never kind of bought into that because I couldn't see it. But when I saw the way God created the world, that he created it out of nothing, that he just imagined it and he spoke it and it came into being, that's how faith operates. And I think there's some truth in that saying, have faith like God has faith. God has, you know, he, he doesn't have faith in anyone. He, he had perfect faith that when he opened his mouth and spoke it and he said, let there be light, light was coming into being even though it never existed before in that frame. And that's how it works. When you're believing God for something, faith comes by hearing. Don't try and get it some other way. You can't get it at Tesco's. <laughs> and you definitely can't get it at Sainsbury's. <laughs> What's the one that starts with a W? Yeah, and Waitrose would be even more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't buy this. It comes by hearing the word of God. That's the only way faith comes. So you hear it, and then you have to decide to believe it. And then you start speaking it. How long do you speak it for? I couldn't tell you. You speak it until. You keep speaking it, and you keep speaking it, and then it will manifest. Finally, you know, because there's the action. The fourth one is the action. Let me tell you. That lady, you see, hearing, believing, speaking, acting. She heard, she believed, she spoke. But if she hadn't walked into the crowd, and if she hadn't touched him, the action is what released the miracle. But it wouldn't have happened if she didn't hear and didn't believe and didn't speak. It wouldn't have happened. So the stage was set, and the final thing was action. An example. I was up in uh, north of Sheffield, you know, where Jim Master is. I hope he stays there. No, don't. No, no, no. <laughs> He's actually also a good friend of mine. I'm only joking. <laughs> I'm preaching for him soon. I was north of Sheffield, and I was preaching in this revival center. Uh, you know, quite an amazing revival center. Something Wilkerson, Bill Wilkerson or something. And uh, I went up there the day before, and they put me in a log cabin, beautiful log cabin built by Scandinavians. And uh, I was staying the night there. And that night, I was due to speak the next day in this revival meeting, you know. And uh, there was a big thing in that area. People would come from many different churches. So I was really looking forward to it. And I went to bed, and I was as sick as a dog. I was as sick as ten dogs. I was so sick. I was just couldn't sleep that night. I couldn't sleep. You know, I had, I had no medicine. And I was stuck in the middle of nowhere. In the nighttime, you know, you can't get into a car and drive off this farm and drive to civilization and try and find some medicine. I had no medicine. If I had medicine, I would have taken it. So the whole night, I didn't have a proper sleep. The next day, I'm thinking, I've got to preach tonight. I get up. I am so sick that I sit on the sofa there and I can't read the Bible. That's how sick I was. I did not have the energy to open my Bible and read it. I just sat there and I was just talking to the Lord, please heal me. I tried to fall asleep. I couldn't even fall asleep because of the symptoms. So I turned, you know, I got my mobile phone and turned on the Bible and I was just listening to the Bible. Just listening to it, listening to it, listening to it. 
So several hours went by, you know. I was feeling very marginally better. And then I thought to myself, looked outside, it was snowing. And it was about a five-minute walk to the hall where I was preaching. And I said, let's go for a walk. That was the action. I believed God wanted to heal me. I, you know, I knew the healing scriptures. I heard them. I believed it. I began to speak some healing scriptures to myself. And then I said to myself, let me go for a walk. And it was snowing. So I got up, walked, and I went into the hall where I was preaching. It was dark because no one was there. And I said to myself, I will preach here tonight. I will preach here tonight. I could have said, well, let's phone him and tell him, you know, I'm very ill and that he needs to get somebody else. Well, I said, I will preach here tonight. You see, speaking is important. And uh, God knows when you believe it. And so I went in and I stood in the pulpit and I was just imagining that I would preach there at night. And I went back to my room. I wasn't still feeling healed. But the moment I went there and got into the pulpit, I was 100% healed. 100% healed. And the symptoms didn't even come back. Hearing, believing, speaking, action of actually going there and believing it. I tell you, friends, for me, I like those four things because they illustrate how faith works. And you're having faith like God because he believed that what he spoke was going to come into being and you to speak. I'm not talking about speaking something that you've con concocted that is not in the Bible. I'm talking about speaking biblical things and things that the Holy Spirit has spoken to you and it will surely come to pass. Amen? See, I always look at my watch. Some preachers never look at their watch. <laughs> new, new life hear that every week. So, the future looks bright. If we can put this into practice, imagine the amount of healings and miracles that are going to take place in our lives. You know? And you can see it happen with your own faith operating in Jesus. In God. God said, let there be light. He saw what it looked like. He said, let the sea bring forth. You know, we're great sea creatures. He created the wild animals. He spoke the tiger and the lion and everything into being, as far as I know. I look forward to seeing the video when I get to heaven as to how he did it. Hallelujah! Amen. When you have faith, Christian life is exciting. Amen. I can tell the ones who have faith and the ones who don't. Let me see. <laughs> Let's stand together. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we're going to have faith right now. You know, you need healing. You need uh, something shifting in your life. You need God to work in a relational situation. I'm encouraging you. You say, I don't want you to go home and say, well, Pastor Ian preached a good sermon or quite a good sermon or, or he spoke a lot of rubbish. I hope you don't say that. <laughs> I don't want you to just go home and say, well, Pastor Ian preached a good sermon today. That's no good to you. But if you put this into practice, it'll result in many things happening in your life in the years to come that would not have happened if you don't put this into practice. Let's lift our hands to the Lord. Let's pray. We have Stuart on the keyboard, please. Let's reach out to God. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Come on, let faith arise in the house. You know, let me just say this because I believe it's come by the Holy Spirit. I remember reading a testimony of this lady. She wanted to get married. And someone told her, get a piece of paper and write out what kind of husband you would like. 
Now, don't go for Denzel Washington or <laughs> Brad Pitt. You know, use common sense. I mean, what kind of husband she would like? And she wrote out about 10 points and put it on her mirror. And she would watch over it every day. And she was in church. And a nice-looking, well-dressed guy came to church. There were lots of eligible people in the church. But he picked her. Why? Because she was believing God. What do you believe in God for? I tell you, faith always works. If you believe in God for nothing, that's exactly what you'll get. Nothing. Let's keep praying. Kura ba ba la ma ba ba. Kila ba 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 la ma ka shin da ba di an da ba la. Ra ba da la ma ka da ba la ba ka da ba la ba ka da ba la. Pili a da ba la ba ka da ba la. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. In Him will I trust. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Let's sing it one more time. Draw closer to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. My rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. In him will I trust. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, friends, reach out to the Lord. Make a decision today what scripture you're going to hold on to. Healing scriptures. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Surely he's born our sicknesses, carried our pains. Esteemed and stricken, spent of God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. And by his stripes we are healed. You've heard the word of God. You believe it? Now let's say this together. Surely he has borne my sicknesses and carried my pains. And by his, stripes, by his stripes, I am healed. I am healed. Let's say this together. He himself, he himself took, my took my infirmities and he bore my diseases. Bore my diseases. Say, Lord I, Lord, I believe your word. Let's say this together. Bless the Lord, O my, my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Not all his benefits. Who forgives all my iniquity. And who heals all my diseases and redeems my life from destruction. Say, Lord, I hear your word. Lord, I believe your word. Lord, I speak your word. So thank you for the manifestation. Now lift your hands up and thank him. There's miracles in the house today. Touch people with your mighty power, Lord. La ba 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 la ba kandikilia. Touch people with your mighty power, Lord. Oh, but some of you say, I want the pastor to do it. No! This word is for you to do it. I saw a lady in the house the other day. I watched her face. She went to Pastor Danny. She went to me. She went to one of the other leaders. And her face was, please pray for me. And she went to about three or four different people to pray for her. And I went up to her and I said, what do you believe in God for? I said, you're going to go from person to person to person to pray for you, but you're not going to have faith yourself. I said, God wants to do this for you. He wants to bless you. 
But after I prayed for you, you're going to find somebody else to pray for you. So you don't want to do anything. And I said, look, you can believe God for yourself. If you're a believer, amen? amen. And I hope she listened to me. So there are many miracles on the way. Let's believe God. Say, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. that you're a God of miracles. And I ask you for releasing, to release the miracles in my life that I need. I thank you, Lord. You are a miracle-working God. I thank you for healing. I thank you for provision. I thank you for favor on my life. I give you thanks and praise. Lift your hands up and thank Him. We sing, sing a song of praise. Can I have you back up, please? How great thou art. We just see one verse of how great thou art. But before we do that, <clears throat> we just have a testimony from Sister Sophia. Good morning, church. I want to actually share my testimony. Two years ago, I was admitted to hospital, and when they tested everything, they told me that I had a massive heart attack. And they, you know, said, they were praying for me and I really actually don't know from where it came but I had a very strong faith that it is not right so since that moment I refuse it I'm not having it it is not my portion I'm not having it so I was there I was there for, I think, five days. Well, everybody said you had and this and this. And I was not believing because I had a massive heart attack. So the consultant was very considerate, very kind. Came on, you know, sat near my bed and hold my hand. That, you know, you know, because the, my behavior was like that. That, you know, they were saying, I don't understand. So he came and said, Mrs. Sheikh, you had a massive heart attack. I said, yeah, they say. He said, what? Do you understand you had a massive heart attack and your 45% um, heart muscles only left? I said, well, it's okay. He looking at me. I thought, he said, the old woman is mad. So <laughs> he went. Well, they discharged me, and they gave me everything, you know, they wanted to take. But th for three months, I was refusing it, refusing it. I'm not having it. This is not my portion, Lord. And I don't know it is wrong or I'm a fighting. You are my God. You are my father. You are a healer. You, I am not having it. You know, I don't know if it was bad or wrong or right. My, I was literally fighting with God. And, and this, it was a over time. So I was so sure that my muscles came back. And I was thinking, because they will not do the investigation again. They said, just discharge you, we don't want. So I was thinking I will go privately. Well, after three months, I had some that it is not right. No more call there in ambulance. They did everything and checked everything what they did. And they said, Mrs. Sheikh, according to your age, your heart muscles are back. Yeah. Your heart muscles are back. That's God. 
and I don't know the due to you know my church then he was praying everybody was praying I I really I have so many problems now but I don't know how come I'm not reaching you know that point to have the same kind of faith but I'm trying thank you We serve a great God, aren't we? A mighty God. Our God is still a healer. He still heals. So we're going to sing this song, How Great Thou Art. We're going to sing one song. And when you sing that song, sing it with everything within you. Let the devil know that we serve a God who is great or powerful. And he still heals like he did back then. So let's trust him. Faith. Let's, just, let's see how much you remember from the message. What's the first thing of Action to faith. Okay, the next one. The next one. The next one. Yes. Okay, so remember that, okay? You hear the word, you believe it, you speak it out, and you act on it. And next week we'll have so many testimonies when you do that. Okay, let's rest your faith. We're going to sing How Great Thou Art. Oh Lord, oh my God, my God. <laughs> oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all Thy words, Thy hand has made. the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thou pass throughout the universe display, oh, then sing Join us this morning for our first joint service. We pray that there'll be many more to come, that we'll do many more things together for the kingdom of God. But I just pray that you were blessed and you were encouraged this morning. And may you have a blessed week. Remember to act on faith, okay? Next week, we want to hear the testimonies, all right? So we're going to end with, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Cheese and coffee is the next door. Please don't run away.
Tea and coffee is the next stop.